Hey, it's Jesse. I'm here uh, in Antarctica. Uh, I'm actually at the Wolfram Tech Conference. It's just really cold here. Um, I'm here just talking with developers and other interesting people using our technology in pretty cool ways. And I'm here with Shadi. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about what you're doing here uh, at the Tech Conference specifically and also what you do here at Wolfram Research generally? I'm the manager of image and audio processing, or at least that's the official title. We do a lot of image audio processing. We are looking into video for the future and also we're doing um, we're taking over some of the import-export capabilities at the Wolfram Research. At the tech conference, as for our team, which is unique and all remote, we, it's always a family reunion for us <laughs> as a team to come here and you know see each other in person. And um, more important than that, we see a lot of users that are interacting and uh, utilizing our software and our capabilities in their day-to-day -day applications. Cool. And get feedback which is very important. Oh yeah, that's probably the best thing yeah. about this. Um, so I, for those who weren't here, I talked to Shadi last year about you know what's new in image and audio processing. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about what's new since I last spoke with you a year ago? A lot of neural network integration, obviously. A lot of high level functions that are already ready to get released in 12 and a lot more pipe uh, in the pipeline for us uh, after 12. Um, Obviously, it's a very hot topic. Everybody talks about machine learning, neural nets, and there is a reason behind it. The, the, um, a lot of attempts for getting so many applications to work accurately um, are now getting to a point that you can have real um, accuracy out of them so that for um, surveillance systems or for um, automobile industry or for any other reasons, you can actually rely on computers doing things accurately for, for you and not fail 30% um, mm -hmm. of the time, which is a very bad failure. <laughs> um, in the, on the screen, I have an example of uh, face detection. We have had this, I think, since version 8 or 9. Um, we are proud to say that in 12, the, the quality of this is going to uh, be a lot better than what it was before. So it is getting into the industry level quality um, in, in 12, and we keep obviously improving it if we can, or if we see if we see problems or fa failures, we're constantly going to improve on that. Um, but also, um, just not doing improvements on um, face detection, for instance, in this particular case, we're always looking into ways of um, adding arguments to the functions and making it more usable, useful. <coughs> Things like um, in this picture, I can find all the faces, but I can also also ask for all the faces that um, approximate it to be 30 years old or, or older, mm -hmm. and and this is gives uh, this is giving back the mom and dad. Um, or for instance, we are doing um, landmark facial landmark analysis as another neural network that was um, out there. We converted it and we're using it, and we are not stopping at there. We are looking into having things like fa space morphing or face effect, facial effects make me thinner or fatter or uh, morph me to this or that person. Mm -hmm. uh, add makeup because we know where is the location of uh, different pieces of a face or mm -hmm. or so many other things. Oh yeah, I feel um, like in like Snapchat and like Instagram they have all these like makeup up filters or you know just fun filters that right. just can follow the face so that seems and we to be love like fun, really fun but we sometimes like to get serious as well <laughs> Like for a lot of surgeries, for instance, plastic surgeries, or um, you know, um, ac after accidents and things like that, people do need to um, simulate what's going to happen right. after. So uh, you know, it, it all fun is always fun, but serious <laughs> stuff are also happening in the world. So mm -hmm. so this is going to have a whole lot of applications out there. Um, we have the Neural Network Repository obviously released this year, um, thanks to our wonderful Neural Network team and machine learning team. Um, I was looking at the networks that are out there. 56 of, I think, about 100, so more than half, are image-related networks. Mm -hmm. And this, as well, is going to open up a whole lot of applications that can be implemented. This is a simple, fun example that uh, translates, that's what it's called in the literature, a horse to a zebra. Um, or, you know, there are other models that can do uh, hand drawing to a um, photorealistic or, or a real uh, photograph or do the other way around and things like that. That, that's about it for image. Um, mm -hmm. Well, not that, but that's the, one of the most important things that's happening with image mm -hmm. and audio. Cool. Um, so you mentioned import-export. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, some of the new responsibilities that y'all have picked up from sort of working on those features and what's been going on? Well, import-export has come to us because 
just the images on their own have, in, in Mathematica, we have about um, 25 formats uh, for images that we can we could have always imported and exported. And then we started making some of those optimized. And then we grew expertise in knowing how our import-export framework works and how we can add more, cap more you know, uh, hookup to new formats that we don't, that we didn't support or make them more, more efficient. Um, through that process, we realized a whole lot of inconsistencies, unfortunately, in our system or inefficiencies. And then um, I guess we are um, taking good sized steps, I wouldn't call them baby steps, mm -hmm. towards having consistent import-export partial access, which is also very important for very large images, but as well for very large data sets, very large Excel files, very large CSV. So it kind of comes... Um, all over the place that we would like to have efficient access to parts of a file rather than the whole file, which was the main focus of Mathematica's import and export, I think, up to um, last one or two versions and things like that. So um, although a lot of other teams are also working and are responsible for their specific formats that is within their expertise domain, uh, we're kind of having a bigger look at our import-export capabilities, making sure we are all doing um, we're designs for import-export consistently and we are doing it efficiently. Mm -hmm. that, that's basically the big story around that. Cool. Um, so what else do you have in this, in this notebook? I, I put a few audio examples. Um, we um, well, these are blue, but they, they're actually going to be released in 12. Um, we also have some neural networks trained for audio, and we have very good and strong audio net encoders, which can be the input to any network. And um, some of them, like um, audio spectrogram, which is a free time frequency um, uh, matrix, basically, from an audio object becomes a 2D object, then at that point, you can practically look at any image neural network and then feed that the spectrogram and it is going to do the um, task, whether it's classification, identification, or some transforms, restyles, and things like that on the audio signal. So we have a good collection of audio net encoders, uh, which just makes audio ready to be digested by a neural network. And then, obviously, people are working on a whole lot of different kinds of structures to do different kinds of tasks. A few examples, this one is a pitch recognize of a, um, a play of a piano that we have in our example data and we recognize the pitch of mm -hmm. those um, notes. Then we have audio identify as another one, like our image identify. Right, right. Um, this is a, a, a bird singing, and then you get five top identifications with their probabilities coming back. Um, speech recognition has a lot of uses everywhere, so that's another thing that is coming built into Mathematica for now only for English. We are going to be looking into other languages for um, post-12, and then um, updated speech synthesize uh, with new languages is also coming in the world of audio, with a whole lot of other more minor updates, obviously, is going to be released in the notes, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention everything. <laughs> right, right. Um, there's like a demo over, uh, the audience can't see, but there's a demo, I think, that uses some of this audio identification functionality to kind of compare your voice to like what animal it thinks you are. Um, what are some more like maybe serious applications of, of that sort of uh, functionality? Um, for audio identification? Right, yeah. Um, so audio identify on its own, this is an experimental function that is getting released in 12. Uh, on its own, it has, you know, it, it's, it's a useful application. You can say this uh, audio recording has humans speaking in it as well as some wind in the background and things like that. So you may just use it on its own as a kind of a scene analysis, audio scene analysis, or... Um, tagging, semantically tagging your audio with different components that it has. Uh, but also what is very, very important with audio identify that is coming is that it's giving us a very good feature extractor for audio. Um, so in a lot of times we see that a trained neural network is chopped at say the you know, one of the last layers of the network, and then you reattach another few layers to that network, or use that layer, you know, two or three before the end, which does the, say, um, identification task, and then um, use that as your audio feature, and then classify that, or as I said, attach another few layers to it, do another training with a smaller, much smaller, typically, um, data set, and do completely different thing, like a song identification or mood classification on a person speaking. Um, in the cases that you are seeing back there, we have a network trained on some celebrity voice data um, that we have found. 
and then uh, we can even find who do you sound like. Last year we had a demo, I think it's still running in the booth as well, who do you look like among celebrities? We have who do you sound like this year. So yeah, yeah. these are just some, again, fun examples, but but imagine in serious world, uh, you would like to separate a long recording between person one and two speaking, mm -hmm. and then do analysis on them per speaker rather than per the whole thing. I see, okay. Um, you kind of exhausted all of my questions. I feel like this is happening a lot this year. Everyone's just kind of on the ball this year. Um, do you have anything else you want to sort of talk about? Well, I added this web audio search in my notebook because I thought it's cool to show that we are uh, oh, yeah. trying to get access to the content that is out there in the world more easily. Obviously, import-export that I talked about already gives us a very good, strong access to the files that are already on your um, file system. Uh, but like web image search and web search, uh, we're adding web audio search. Currently, we're just connecting to free sound. There are other audio services, not as many as they are for images. But um, this is going to be a very good resource. And then I added the fun section about color, going back to the images stuff. Uh, we always had color directives. We never had right, a definition yeah. for a neighborhood of color. So mm -hmm. almost reds, almost greens, and things like that. So this, this is coming, and it's enabling things like I want to recolor this shoe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then what would it look like if I changed the almost reds to greens mm -hmm. or also almost pinks to blue? And I think this is already, you can imagine where this is, you know, go to this website for shopping and right, then the exactly. shirt keeps changing the yeah. color, but the model is sitting exactly the same. Yeah. So you know that techniques like that are, are applied to the image. So mm -hmm. very applicable in, um, I think, merchandise industry and, and a lot of other places, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Um, cool, well, thanks for talking with me. Uh, thanks for out. having me here. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's all the talks we have today, but tune in tomorrow and I'll be talking with other developers uh, and other cool people. So thanks for watching.